Egypt proposes law that would ban journalists from talking about religion. On wow. February 20th, Tariq Radwan, head of the Human Rights Committee of the Egyptian Parliament, proposed a law which bans, quote unquote, non-specialist journalists from discussing religion. The proposal is in response to journalist Ibrahim Issa's recent controversial statements that dismissed the Islamic story of the Prophet Muhammad's ascension to heaven as delusional. Egypt's prosecutor general also investigated Issa for possible blasphemy charges. The proposed law intends to, quote unquote, avoid chaos in society by limiting or stopping the discussion of religion and religious topics in broadcast media. Radwan's proposed law is in addition to the legislative gymnastics performed by Egypt's conservative Islamic regime to advance its agenda of restricting freedom of speech. In 2021, 31 United Nations members signed a joint declaration condemning Egypt's, quote, quote restrictions on free expression and the right to peaceful assembly, the, constra uh, the constrained space for, the, for civil society and political opposition. Okay, let me read this part one more time because this doesn't seem right to me, okay? And you tell me if this part is actually correct, okay? Uh, Tarek Redwan, head of, okay, pay attention to this, head of the Human Rights Committee of the Egyptian Parliament proposed this law to ban journalists from talking about religion. The head, the human rights, the head of the Human Rights Committee. So the person that is in charge of human rights is yes. banning speech. Okay. Does he know what his job is? <laughs> like, isn't that, is it like, is it, is, is his job not the opposite, like, of this, of what he's doing? Like, what does he, like, what does he think human rights? Oh my God. So the, the guy whose title is human, the title of his job is human rights, is limiting people's rights, the most important right. The main right, the free, the, mm -hmm, the freedom of mm -hmm, expression mm -hmm. right. The guy that is again, the guy that is the head of human rights in Egypt, is proposing a law banning the most important rights that we have. Is this opposite land? Like Egypt is opposite. <laughs> <laughs> like at least, like, have you no shame, sir? Tariq yeah, yeah, Redman, yeah. have you have you no shame? Do you know do you know what your job is supposed to represent? Unbelievable. Oh my God. Like you would think like this is, I, you would think like in a news title like this, in a news item like this, you would see that the human rights committee is are the people who are opposing the proposal of this law. The institution in Egypt that is like, hold on a second, maybe you're going too far. But the source of it is the human rights committee. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. This is insane. I love like this. <laughs> Music guy is saying, this reminds me of Pakistan. It's getting, it, yeah, do you say, man, it's tough to be a journalist these days. Well, Egypt in particular over the last it's few rough. years has had very severe crackdowns on journalists in general. But so if you guys remember, last week we talked about how this um, uh, journalist, Ibrahim Issa, got in really big trouble because he said that the story of, um, what's it? It's uh, Issa and Mirage. Um, the uh, prophet muhammad you know coming out of his bed and he flies to jerusalem and then he flies up to heaven on a on a donkey that has wings with a woman's face and then he talks to god and then god gives him instructions on how to like muslims should pray actually he negotiates with god because yeah, doesn't supposed god to be 50. yeah he wants people to pray 50 times a day and then muhammad he talks him down you know you only got to do it five times well I, <laughs> and then he returns well, no, to give yeah. Muslims the correct message. And this this guy on his TV show said that this was delusional and it caused yes. all this outrage to the point that now they're tr they're proposing laws to say only specialists can talk about this on, on TV. Only specialists can talk about religion, which really means the state is involving itself in declaring a state religion what is the other consequence of a state involving itself in these matters besides delineating 
what is or is not correct theology. Um, yeah. By the way, that guy is probably an atheist. He just has to use religious branding to be able to say, like, this is nonsense, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. This, but, but for people who don't know, this caused, caused a lot of chaos in Egypt's media, social media, and traditional media. Just one guy coming in and be like, imagine like how backward your country has to be. Where somebody comes like, hey, by the way, this story probably didn't happen. And then it's like, <laughs> there's like, there's chaos. They're like, we have to do something about these people talking about things that they so, aren't supposed to be talking about. Like, you can't even have opinions. Like, wait, can you have positive opinions? Like, okay, so, so they want to put a ban on people talking about religion. What if you want to say something good about religion? Is that also bad? What if you want to say like, you know, Prophet Muhammad was the best. <laughs> you can't say that? <laughs> Can you not say that in Egypt anymore? Because we're talking about religion. <laughs> well, I mean, it probably depends on what kind. You know, if you were Ahmadi and saying positive things about the Ahmadi no, faith, what if, like that wouldn't no, fly. What, no, okay, they want to put a ban on talking about religion. What if you just want to say that? You know, news alert, this just com comes in, you know. Prophet Muhammad, still awesome, still awesome. Like breaking news. What if you want to say that? That would be banned? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, okay, really, have... it's very clear that like conservative lawmakers were extremely outraged over this whole issue. I mean, I um I can't remember off the top of my head about the um new segment we covered last week, but I'm pretty sure scholars came forward from Al Azhar University to say, no, Mirage definitely happened. This is undisputable. Because when Ibrahim Isa was talking about this, he just said that this story is delusional and that people who subscribe to this idea or people who promote it without looking at other sources, other scholarly sources, are just proposing and are sticklers to a Salafi fundamentalist view. So he's not even like saying flat out that Islam is false. He's just saying that this strict interpretation of this is something that happened. Is He's criticizing Salafism. And the state is now involving itself and coming forth and saying, no, no, this is definitely true. Everyone, 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 calm down. Calm down. This is true. And tsh, tsh, don't talk about it again. Because the whole idea, like he said, is to prevent chaos in society. That's mm -hmm. the whole idea behind this proposed ban. This is the 21st century, people. When you have governments telling people that you cannot question whether Muhammad flew to heaven on a winged horse with a woman's face. By the way, the, act the story that Susanna was referring to, uh, the more detailed version of it is that Muhammad, Muhammad was such a beta, right? Like he was like, he didn't <laughs> fight with God. No, it was, it was Moses. Okay, so God told, Allah told Muhammad that, yeah, go back down there and tell Muslims that they have to pray 50 times a day okay and muhammad on his way down moses like stops muhammad moses is in heaven and moses is like what did god tell you and god said muhammad said like oh god told me that muslims have to pray to for 50 times a day moses was like are you are you serious like that's not gonna happen <laughs> moses was like that's <laughs> moses was telling muhammad that that's not gonna happen and you need to go back up there right so <laughs> you're like, nah, bro. <laughs> no, get, turn around, get your ass back up there. Yeah. So he went back up there, and apparently God was like, okay, 40. All right? And then Muhammad comes down, and Moses is like, what happened? You're like, God made, brought it down to 40. And Moses is like, no, 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 no. You need to go back up there. And then he keeps going back, and he comes, like, like gets it to, I don't know, 30 and then 20 and he comes back between Moses and God. So Muhammad is going up and down to a higher level of heaven and then a lower heaven. Moses in a low, is in a lower heaven level of heaven and God is like an upper level of heaven. So he keeps going up and down like in an elevator or something, right? I mean, maybe he was on Barak the entire time, right? But eventually... <laughs> eventually by the way this is very stereotypical because muhammad didn't argue with god but moses who's jewish was like no you need to like argue and like this is oh, no. <laughs> moses was like no 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 
It's like, yeah, you don't understand. Nobody's going to pray 50 times a day, right? So, but even when Muhammad came to Moses and like, okay, I brought it down to five, Moses was still like, no, 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 no. You need to go back. Five is still too much. And Muhammad was like, I have, to, I, I can't go back. I have shame. Like, this would be too shame. Like, I, I don't have um, enough audacity to go back to God and bring it down to lower than five, right? And and that's why it ended up being five. So this is the story behind why Muslims are supposed to pray five times a day. And I and I think the the moral of the story is supposed to be like you ungrateful Muslims who don't even pray five times a day. You were supposed to pray fifty, but oh, because you are trip. so, it's a guilt trip. It's a guilt trip to be like God. You know, you are you your the right number was fifty, but you are so ungrateful. And you, you, that it was not expected of you to be able to do, do, do that because you're a bunch of whiny, ungrateful, you know, slaves of God that we're like, okay, do five. And imagine if you can't even do that. Like, so this is supposed to guilt trip the people who are not doing the five times of prayer. They're like, dude, you were supposed to do 50 and they brought it down to five and you're still not doing the five. How ungrateful do you have to be? This whole story is about making Muslims feel guilty. So abusive. This is abusive. This is abusive to Muslims. You know, Islam is Muslim is bigoted against Muslims because it's very is is you know abusive mental, you know, relationship. Yeah. Secular rarity saying that poor donkey. You guys <laughs> saying that sounds like Monty Python comedy. I was thinking about when you're talking about this whole process, like this would be the most hilarious comedic montage. <laughs> like right. someone needs to do like a comedic animation of this. In mass oh. is calling the, the bragging hustler of heaven. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is another interesting thing. Like in all these stories, they kind of try to like the stories are a lot more about the stories because they keep on trying to like add like there. There's always a little bit of a detail here and there in these stories to s spread a certain type of value. You know what I mean? So the stories you have to pay attention to the details. For example, part of the story is about how Muhammad when like he was like going he went to the heavens and the prophets he met the prophets but then he went to the higher part of the heaven where the prophets couldn't go which shows that muhammad's mm -hmm. level is higher than all the other prophets um and then he went higher and higher and getting closer and closer to god but then there is another part of the story shows that gabriel he was the entire time he was with muhammad but then Muhammad kept on going farther and Gabriel was shocked because he he went farther than Gabriel could go. And Gabriel was like, the place you're going, I can't even go because Gabriel is supposed to be the closest angel to God. And he was shocked that Muhammad could still keep getting closer to God. And that, that was too high of a level for him. And he had to stand back. And he, he, like, he, he couldn't believe that Muhammad was like going f be without him. Right. So this shows how close Muhammad is to God beyond anyone else. Right. Oh my another goodness. very interesting, yeah, another interesting part of this de detail part of the story is that Muhammad said um, that when he met Abraham in heaven, he looked just like him. This is a very important detail that Abraham looked exactly like Muhammad, his face. Because the entire, it, yeah, because it's supposed to it's supposed to draw the lineage of the Arabs back to the Jews. Exactly, because Muhammad is supposed to be a lineage of the prophets of the Jewish prophets. The whole entire legitimacy of Islam is through the bloodline of Abraham, of of the Arabs being the the children of one of Abraham's sons. Jewish people are, are the sons of. Um, Isaac and Arabs are the sons of Ishmael or Ismail. Integral. You know? So that was a very important detail that was added in the story, right? Anyways. Wait, this is hilarious comment from Forever Stormy. She always gets some, she drops some bangers on us. <laughs> Forever Stormy is saying, it was the donkey that was allowed in higher circles. Muhammad just attached himself to the donkey. We should be <laughs> worshiping the donkey. <laughs> That's really good.
<laughs> yeah, oh my we, God. We there should be a temple to the to Barack. Yes, the yes, guy. all yeah. hail Barack. Let's <laughs> make a new religion. Let's make a new cult that says Islam got it all wrong. That the, yeah, a temple to Barack. <gasps> that would be amazing. All right. Somebody saying all hail the holy donkey. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's this is yeah. my little donkey hand sign. <laughs> Okay, okay. What sounds do donkeys make? <laughs> they don't neigh. Oh <laughs> All right. Yeah, you were saying Abraham is considered Muslims by Muslims. Yeah, every prophet is considered to be Muslim by Islam. Atheist Republic needs your help. We've been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.